Hello and welcome to C2 Part 4, Working in the TCP IP Manager. The TCP IP Database Manager allows the programmer to manage the one-way IP commands in the database in the same way as the RS-232 command sets are managed in the RS-232 Database Manager. This course will provide a walkthrough of the TCP IP Manager, including easily converting RS-232 code sets to TCP IP, and testing codes using the KD MC2500 and a connected network router. The TCP IP Manager is one of five components of the Compass Control software suite. The bottom third of the icon depicts an RJ45 connector, while the top two thirds of the icon are the Compass Control nautical logo. We open up the TCP IP Manager by double clicking and provide proper authority based on your Windows software. As we take a look through the TCP IP Manager, you'll notice it looks very similar to the RS-232 Manager. Therefore, our Device Properties window and Work Panels are all very similar, if not identical, to the RS-232 Manager. For example, we have our device classification as a matrix switcher or multi-zone product where we can set the number of inputs, number of outputs, and then we can clone the output one command so as to easily duplicate the command sets in that output one and apply it to all your additional outputs, therefore making uh, your code set building very easy, very convenient as it's just a typically a, an issue of changing a character or two instead of re-adding action IDs, function names, data, parameters, etc., etc. Our control properties window is probably uh, the biggest difference between the RS-232 manager and the TCP IP manager because your RS-232 control properties where your RS-232 protocol was listed here obviously is not going to be necessary for connection via TCP IP. We do still, however, have the handshaking option which in the RS-232 manager would have been the uh, UART, UART sort of uh, communication. Same thing for RS-232 as uh, TCP IP where if you enable the handshaking, the two devices will, before sending their data, ping each other to make sure that they are uh, clear to send their information. Our default repeat settings and delay settings, again, are um, currently manipulated through the Compass Navigator software instead of in the respective IR, RS-232, or TCP IP manager as we've uh, disclosed throughout each of the Level C2 uh, videos. Your MC ports for testing now, uh, a very big uh, difference here also between the TCP IP manager and the RS-232 manager. For those of you who have been watching perhaps C2.1, C2.2, C2.3, and now C2.4 respectively and sequentially, you'll notice that we've always been working with an IP address of 192.168.1.40. That was the IP address of our MC2500. Obviously, we were communicating with that MC2500 when we we're using IR and RS-232. However, for TCP IP, we're actually communicating with the device to be controlled. In this case, my KD HDMS 8x8, which has an IP setting of an IP address setting of 192.168.1.230. Again, uh, we also would match the IP port. And now, just as in our RS-232 manager, we have uh, your edit, add, delete, duplicate, and test functions, uh, your termination, if you'd like to show your standards uh, based on the action ID classifications, uh, terminate with uh, allows you to add the carriage return and line feed which are still uh, most likely going to be uh, necessary if they were necessary in the RS-232 language, command language for your device to be controlled. But we could switch over here for example now into terminal mode and uh, without even opening up my IP manager uh, we could connect to my HDMS 8x8. We see that I have received the feedback now and we could begin issuing some commands. SPO01, SI01. Uh, I could do this two ways. Actually, I can uh, send the command to the window and then hit enter, which is sort of a manual way to do the carriage return in line feed. As you saw, that worked just fine for me. Or I can go ahead and uh, add that line feed and carriage return, carriage return, backslash R, line feed, 
backslash lowercase n and uh, send a different command uh, say output one select input eight and that goes through just fine now you know how to open up your RS-232 libraries and you see how similar the RS-232 manager is to the TCP IP manager. So what we want to show you now is actually an amazing feature of the Compass software suite that has really made TCP IP language and communication and control very convenient for our installers and it's something as a result that has been a very popular feature and it's based on the what we've noticed as a well let's just say a fact that your TCP IP control codes and command codes and structures are identical to your RS-232 command structures and codes uh, in other words for example these switching commands we've been issuing for the key digital matrix SPO01 SI08 as we see here would be the exact same command in RS-232 as it is here in IP and we see them working and we've noticed that as uh, certainly across the board across the spectrum with all the gear we've worked with so we're going to show you here now based on that fact uh, a fantastic trick that our engineers have created into making your TCP IP manager and library uh, how, how it just as large as your RS-232 library and to do that we just jump into our uh, default our uh, supplied library we go to uh, the uh, excuse me we go here to the uh, program files where all of the um, key digital compass control gear is, is stored program files or program files x86 compass control go into our libraries and we're gonna jump into our RS-232 database here actually RS-232 database and we can now pull our key digital library and I'm gonna copy it and I am now going to actually uh, paste this onto my desktop okay here we are and I need to do one uh, quick uh, bit of trickery here which is just where we had the automatic exp extension added of the underscore RS I'm going to rename that to underscore IP now that's not all it takes okay uh, so make sure you continue to watch as we open up our IP uh, manager here what I am now going to do is create a new library okay it says uh, uh, no, no worries about that that's a folder that I've deleted so everything is brand new for you guys here as you watch um, I'm going to create a new folder and just as I did with my IR and RS-232 user library I'm going to create them in my uh, <coughs> documents here key digital compass tech here we go I have my IR and my RS folder let's go ahead and create a new folder that is my initials and then the library type IP and let's jump in there and let's create a JF uh, key digital and again the suffix the uh, underscore IP it will automatically be added so we save that <clears throat> and now we take a look here I've created the library but it is still empty and now this is where this import comes into play here I can actually import codes into my new library that I've created and so I'm going to go ahead and take the one from my desktop that we know has all of the codes that were RS-232 but I renamed them as IP go ahead open that and now we're at we have the option of importing any of those code sets here and so uh, for example not all of these products are IP controllable but I know that my HDMI switchers are my IR switchers because uh, we're going to take advantage of the control routing uh, feature and RS-232 control routing as well so let's say that that's uh, those are the devices I want to carry over and here we have our execute execute Im import uh, button excuse me it is this button execute import we go ahead and select that and now my key digital user library features all of those codes that I've just sent over for example my HDMS 8x8 that's my IR router okay let's collapse that 
my R is 232. Let's open up our HDMS 8x8 here. And let's now begin to uh, issue some switching commands, shall we? Let's test this command out. We got to make sure to go back into command mode and test our functions. There we are. All output set to input 5. Test another one. Connected to HDMS successfully. Huh. There we go. So now we have very easily, very conveniently converted our RS-232 library and code sets to TCP IP. So what may be re left is uh, perhaps to delete any uh, devices that do not support TCP IP. Uh, the HDMS 4x4 did not, for example. Uh, HDSW, let's delete them. And we delete them one at a time. Uh, takes just a second or two as everything is uh, re-cataloged, but of course, it sure beats having to enter the codes character by character for each and every device on here, especially as TCP IP uh, undoubtedly is, a, is definitely a growing um, uh, uh, control format. Uh, we see uh, a growing and increased amount of demand for that um, from the residential and the commercial integrators here at Key Digital. And uh, we really feel that this is perhaps the, uh, the greatest reason, uh, the, greatest, the greatest method of creating a TCP IP library across the entire industry. And uh, the beautiful thing about TCP IP is I'm using a connection from my router right now, not a connection from my MC2500. So it's very valuable as well. And we could go ahead now and save that library. And as you can see, everything seems to be in a very good order here with our new IP library that we have transferred over, converted over from RS-232.